Hello everybody and welcome to Felts by Philippa. Today we're going to be making this lovely little herdwick sheep. He has got clay horns and he's got a little bit more detail around the face and eyes so I'm going to show you how to do those things. You need a one millimetre wire, glue, scissors, these are just wire cutters and wire benders. 4 mil eyes, they're plastic, buy them online, quite cheap. And we've got a carded Shetland wool in a white, in a grey and a black. And then we've got the Herdwick wool. I actually bought this from the shop, it's actual Herdwick wool. So uh, it's the first time I've used it and it's worked very well. And this is polymer clay that I've used a couple of colours that I'll combine together. So take about 36 inches of wire and then start to bend it into the shape of the legs and the body and I do a little bit for the neck I don't go too mad and do all of the head because I can attach that quite firmly there we go so that's the body take out the wool start wrapping it round I have speeded this up an awful lot because a couple of my other videos have covered this in quite good detail so there we go I've padded it out firmed it up this is a triple needle I use sometimes just to help and there we go. So I'm going to do one of the legs and show you how to do that. Again, I have covered it in more detail in one of the videos. You just wrap it round, keep it tight and then start needle felting it in. And the base of the hoof, if you needle felt it upwards, that will get a nice flat base. There we go, four legs done. So now we're going to do the hooves. Have a little bit of colour that you're going to put down the bottom. Work it into a straight line around and just needle felt it nice and firm. It takes a while but they look good when they're done. And then this we put as a line down the middle like a cleft of the hoof. So a nice thin line, needle felt the front, take it round to the back and then needle felt it in. And again I have covered this in more detail in the other video. Four hooves. So I'm going to put a little bit of neck on, just attach that, firm it up. I like my sheep to have a neck. There we go, and now I'm going to make the head. So the head you need to spend a bit of time on, roll it up nice and tight, firm it all up. This is my Wensleydale sheep, that's the, another video I did in a bit more detail. So the head was a bit small so I had to make it a little bit bigger. So it's nice and firm. I'm taking a slightly finer needle, a 40 uh, triangular, to do the little details around the mouth. So take a thin bit of the grey or the black, it's up to you, and we take one bit round into the shape of the mouth. Take another bit, oh no I added a bit more to it there, and then we're going to take another bit and make a line above it and turn that into a V for the nostrils. There's the V, it's very quick, I have speeded this up quite a bit. And then you need to have a line joining the two going vertically down and this gives you the mouth feature. There you go. Next we're going to pop the eyes in, make a little hole, check you're happy with them and then glue them in. I'm going to do detail around the eyes. I take a little bit of grey and I wrap it all the way, all the way around the outside of the eye and it just softens the eye one side and then I'm just going to do the other oh, I've done the other there we go very quick so next I'm going to do a little um, eyelid so I fold over a bit of wool needle felt it and then place it on top of the eye and it gives the appearance of the eye socket and the eyelid and it makes it look a lot lot better and a lot um, more professional <clears throat> so I'm quite happy with him there I'm going to make the ears, so I fold over and fold over, 
into sort of an oval. I'm going to put a bit of shading in the middle. It takes a while to get the edges of the ears looking neat. So there's the shading in the middle. And then you're going to fold the two edges together or pinch it and needle felt that down so that'll be ready to go on and I don't put them on yet put them on towards the end so I'm going to do the horns so I've mixed together some of the clay so I'm going to do an L shape with the wire and we'll roll the horn you have to do two the same if you can one part of the L is going to go down into the head of the sheep and the other part is going to go into the horn. So when you're happy and they're identical, take the clay and then we're going to roll the clay into a tube. Make one end fatter than the other. There we go. And then I have a little shaping tool which puts little ridges on it. You could use a fork. And I just make lots of little lines and give it a bit of definition. Then we're going to push one end onto the wire and give it a small twist as if it's an actual horn. Do the same on the other side. Make sure the horns are in the right direction. Put it in the oven. I cook it for at least an hour on low. And there they are all cooked and that's how they're going to go in towards the end. We don't want them on now because they'll be a pain when we're doing the coat. So attach the head. You have to make the neck nice and strong because you're going to be putting the horns in through the neck. They'll go through the top of the head but they will extend down into the neck so spend a bit of time. I'm trying to go and uh, give him a, so we, we wrap a bit round like a scarf and that really helps secure it all up. I think I do a bit more in a minute to make it really strong. I'm going to twist his head to the side so he's looking slightly to the side. So you just hold it there and needle felt it. There we go, we do a bit more. <clears throat> Make sure he's nice and strong. He looks silly without his coat, obviously. He'll look good eventually. So this is the um, Herdwick wool that I got. Get it into about three or four inch lengths. And you're going to do a low skirt. So you needle felt through the middle to secure it and then fold it and needle felt it down again. This makes it really secure. And because it was quite long, I have trimmed the end off this one. So I do the second and then trim it again. It's probably easier to trim as you go, otherwise you'll have a lot to trim at the end. You can almost create a little seam as you go along there. It's, it's, um, it was a very neat wool to work with. It was quite easy. There we go. So do that all the way around the bottom and then next, so that's his first skirt, you're going to go about half an inch further up, same again. It's quite straightforward, just gives him a lovely big fluffy coat. Hold it over, seam along the top so that it's nice and secure. And then I did trim it as I went, just trim it a little bit shorter than the one below. And go all the way round, next one. And then again, another one about half an inch further up. And again, trim it and push it down. Don't worry if it's too fluffy, we can sort that out at the end. So the back I just work back, fold it over and work along the back. He does look fluffy, but he'll look fine, don't, don't worry. So now I've done most of the back and the body, now I attach the ears. I've left a fluffy bit on the end of each ear, so it makes it easy to attach them. There we go, it looks lovely. And now we're going to do the horns. Now I was trying to work out whether they go in front of the ear or behind. So I've got a, a little tool that makes a nice hole and you dig it right right down through the neck and I wasn't sure in front or behind so I had a look at pictures <laughs> so I'll get back to you there we go behind is better I decided <laughs> so check out how they're gonna look dig it right down and in yeah we're happy we're gonna cover the top so don't worry about the wire showing there so 
put a load of glue on that nice long bit and this will keep them really secure. There we go, push them in, leave them to dry, go and have lunch and then come back and they'll be all nice and dry. I've put a bit more at the top because I'm going to cover that up. There we go, so I think they're all dry and now we're going to do under the neck. So I'm still with the grey at the moment and I'm going to cut it shorter than the three to four inches because the neck, otherwise it would look really puffy. And as you do it, just needle felt through the middle. When you fold it, don't needle felt it much on the top because you'll end up seeing it. You can kind of have a hidden seam under the chin if you do it like this. There we go, it looks like he's got a ruffle, but we'll um, just smooth it down a bit afterwards. Do the same on the other side. So that's the neck done, and now I'm going to put white on the top. I just think it's better than the grey. You could put grey, you could put the actual Herdwick coat, or you could put a grey carded. I've just used the white carded wool, and it just covers up all the wire, from the horns because I think most Herdwicks do have they are quite light on top so just needle felt it in gently you're not going to needle felt it loads because you don't want any marks showing <clears throat> and you want him to have a little bit of a fringe gives him a bit of character so you see how I turned his head quite a bit it keeps turning back it doesn't look that turned but um, obviously you could have used that grey if you'd wanted to now next you go round with your needle and just fluff up the coat, check the bottom, and there he is, all finished. The one beside him is a really basic Herdwick. I've also done a video on that if you'd like to try something for a beginner. Um, he didn't take long, he'll take you about an hour. He took me about a day and a half, this one, so he's lovely, very cute. Um, the next video I'm going to do is going to be on Valet Black Nose Sheep, which are extremely popular, they're very cute. Um, and thank you very much for watching. My Etsy shop is Felts by Philippa. Take care. Bye.